Hello fellow Spare Parts Army, welcome to Task and Purpose. In this episode, it's time to learn about the sacred artillery tactical art of the shoot and scoot. Made famous by the US Army's self-propelled M109 Paladin. So call for fire on that like and subscribe button and let's move out. The M109 is the American military's king of battle. It's a highly protective, fast-moving, mobile 155mm yeet machine. But it's been around since 1963 at this point, and some military analysts believe it's fast becoming obsolete. So where did the self-propelled M109 artillery vehicle even come from in the first place? And what are some of the tactics and procedures that they've used over the years? Better yet, can you lower the thing 45 degrees and just fire it like a tank? Yes, you can do direct fire with the cannon on ground targets, but if you're in that kind of fixed bayonet sort of situation, I'm probably already planning my tactical retreat. In World War I, we saw the rise of the first tanks. I can picture the military designer Walton Gordon Wilson sitting there in 1917, looking at the new armored tanks, then looking at static cannon artillery pieces, then looking back at the tank, the gears in his head slowly turning as he has the epiphany and puts two and two together. Walter Wilson combined these two genius ideas of tanks and artillery into one beautiful system. He then ran to his commanding officer with his great idea and they instantly rejected it. Luckily, David Lloyd George, the Minister of Munitions, overruled the decision and placed an order with the Ordnance Board for 50 of the Mark I gun carriers. It's the world's first ever self-propelled artillery that didn't need to be dragged around by horses. The Mark I gun carrier had a 6-inch howitzer cannon and was powered by a Dynamer petrol 105 horsepower engine. We've come a long way since then. During the Vietnam War, the constantly changing troop movements of the enemy presented a problem for traditional static artillery batteries. In 1963, the first M109 was accepted into service just in time to help with the fight. One of the benefits of the M109 was that it had a 360 degree traverse radius. In comparison, traditional artillery pieces and previous self-propelled howitzers had a very narrow traverse radius and had to be physically turned to change their direction. Inside the hull of the M109, the artillery crew had some level of protection against incoming enemy shells. In the summer months of 1967, the 4th Battalion, 11th Marine Regiment, 1st Marine Division, was equipped with the M109, and they were sending shells downrange daily onto North Vietnamese artillery positions. It was the best possible weapon for counter-battery firing missions, thanks to its armor protection for the crew. These weapons were critical in fighting off the Tet Offensive and preventing that attack from being worse than it ultimately was. The composite armor of the vehicle protects the artillery crew from shrapnel and indirect hits. It's made of a reinforced rolled 5083 aluminum alloy similar to the M113 troop carrier. The M109 was originally operated by a crew of six soldiers, including a section chief, a driver, gunner, assistant gunner, and two ammunition loaders. To boil their strategy down to a single phrase, they have perfected the art of shoot and scoot. This is the artillery tactic of firing and then instantly relocating to a new position to avoid having your position fixed. Each one of the vehicles could store 28 rounds of ammunition and each howitzer section was paired with an M548 tracked ammunition carrier. The howitzer uses a main gun that fires a 155mm shell with a separate bag charge. It's powered by a diesel engine as a secondary M250 caliber machine gun. Okay, we're done shooting from this position. Time to fire up the engine, PFC Carl. Let's scoot to the new location. Time now, Oscar Mike, huh? The M109 weighs 27 tons, which is actually relatively lightweight for an armored tank. They sacrifice some armor to keep its mobility since it's not meant as a direct combat vehicle. It has a max rate of fire of six rounds per minute if you're really gunning it, and a sustained realistic rate of fire of three rounds per minute. This is a terrain denial weapon. So what that means is it can be used to create dead zones in a battle space, especially you want to use it to cut off enemy positions where you're not well defended. So for instance, instead of having to place a whole infantry company of 100 soldiers to guard a border, you can put a platoon of four M109 artillery pieces there instead. The self-propelled artillery vehicles need even less soldiers than fixed artillery positions, which require nine troops. Here's a perfect example of how the M109's power works. On November 8, 2018, the Field Artillery Squadron that was codenamed Steel and 3rd Squadron, codenamed Thunder, were deployed to... <laughs> That's seriously... 
Sometimes I forget how silly code names can be. So they were deployed to a temporary fire base near the border of Iraq and Syria. Their mission was to prevent enemy fighters from crossing the Syrian border into Iraq to escape. So they coordinated fire and they rained down all holy hell on top of those insurgents. And here's the kicker. They were able to do it from various positions. Fire missions came with little to no notice and gun crews scrambled to provide immediate fire support. Captain Thompson of the 3rd Cav Regiment was serving as the field artillery commander there and he said, quote, I don't think there's a single artillery battery in the army doing what we're doing right now. We've jumped to four totally unique locations in the last few months, establishing new firing positions from scratch in some very austere locations. Great vocab word, sir. This is the power of the M109 howitzer. Just when the enemy thinks they know where the punches are coming from, you've already gone to a new location and you're throwing punches from a different location. I do appreciate the extra added protection of the hull, but do you have any idea how uncomfortable it can get in this thing? Sometimes I'd rather be out in the open with the fresh air, I'll take my chances, rather than have to spend another minute listening to PFC Carl's prison stories. Sorry, no offense, Carl. The A5 added a even newer barrel, increasing the range from 11 miles to 13 and a half miles, or 22,000 meters. And they also added a new rocket assisted shell and that's increased the max range of the M109 to 18 miles, 30,000 meters. We're talking about doubling the range of the original M109 at this point. But the next iteration, which is the M109A6, is where the vehicle earned the name Paladin, which by definition means a trusted military leader and champion. This version of the M109 truly brought the vehicle into the modern era. It added a new system to send grid location and data to a central fire direction center, which in turn coordinates fire through battalion command or higher. And battalion isn't that high of a level. You see how US military strategy operates at the lower levels. Modern artillery radar systems can detect multiple incoming artillery rounds, and then it can provide a counter-firing ballistic solution so that you're able to hit the enemy before those rounds even impact on you. One of the biggest advancements in the works for the M109 is the new kind of prototype hypervelocity projectile. It's going to be able to fire it really soon. The project started in 2016 when the Army test fired ammo that was originally meant for the Navy's electromagnetic railgun. They instead fired it from the M109 cannon and they learned something really interesting. This super speedy hypervelocity round can actually be used for the purposes of intercepting incoming missiles in midair while being way cheaper than your traditional interceptor. This new munition has a range of 93 kilometers. It's not very powerful, sure, but it's perfect for knocking out high-speed enemy missiles. They recently successfully targeted a simulated cruise missile in 2020. So the Paladin is able to halt from moving and fire within 30 seconds, something that previously took minutes to achieve. Typically, this allows a battery to quickly displace between salvos if attacked by indirect fire by the enemy, and then rapidly set up again once they're in a safe position. The M109A6 Paladin was used extensively in Iraq and Afghanistan. The newest version of the M109 is the A7. In keeping with the design philosophy of the original M109, this shares some key components with the Army's Bradley fighting vehicle in order to keep down production costs as well as maintenance costs. It weighs about 10,000 pounds more than the A6 Paladin due to the armor upgrades. Even with the extra weight, it is faster and more maneuverable than the Bradley fighting vehicle. It uses a new automatic rammer. This means that the overall crew can be reduced from six to four soldiers, and it increases the load speed of the A7 to a max rate of fire of four rounds per minute. The very first vehicles were delivered in 2014, but it was only done as a very low rate initial production. The Army started filling full rate production orders of the vehicle in 2015. The Army is currently working on an autoloader to increase the M109's sustained rate of fire to 6 to 10 rounds per minute. They're also redesigning the howitzer to handle even higher pressure rounds, which would increase accuracy and distance even further. These improvements would upgrade the design so much that it would have to be redesignated the M1299, an entirely new vehicle at this point. Testing for the M1299 is planned for 2023, and the autoloader is planned to be done by 2025, but check back here that year and we'll see how far it's been delayed. The M109 changed warfare by allowing troops to have protection while firing artillery. And it's one of those systems that works so well that it's honestly hard to find a replacement for it at this point. Future artillery pieces could offer greater range and new munitions that might promise higher lethality, 
but so long as the US Army's combined operation tactics are successful, there isn't really a need to replace the M109 right now. Do you think it has longevity in the Army? Do you have experience with one of these? Should the Army have replaced these decades old vehicles by now to compete with our near peers? I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. If you wanna see more content like this, remember to like and subscribe to help with the YouTube algorithm. Please share with your friends and help give the channel some more visibility. Thank you.